Guys, hello, welcome. Guys, if you don't know who I am, I'm Bob. Hello, welcome. I'm sure most of you already know because you're probably from my stream. But if you don't, I'm Bob. I have a YouTube channel called Wolf Den. Yay. I make videos on video game hardware, mostly Nintendo stuff. Today, I'm going to be making a video on a cool new Game Boy Color that I got. I'm gonna unbox it and I'm gonna take some B-roll of it, but I wanna show you how I shoot. So the purpose here is to show you how I shoot things. All right, I'm going to uh, get a lav mic. Things might sound weird if you're used to me talking into this mic, I'm sorry. I'm also gonna grab my light. What else am I gonna do? And my camera. What camera do you you use i use a canon eos r i'm looking to upgrade to maybe the r5 because i'm getting a new studio and i'd like to use the current camera that i use as a webcam but they'll probably be the same <laughs> maybe i'll be able to do more slow-mo but that's really it i do slow-mo for some stuff like some of the ads that i do like some of the coffee ads you might see me like drop some beans that that's in slow motion or even like uh, the first magic spoon ad was all shot with the eos r and uh uh, you know, I was pouring like the magic spoon and it was in slow motion. That stuff was in 720p and no one noticed. That's going to be a theme here that I think is really important to, to understand. I do a lot of things that are maybe like a step beyond what a normal YouTuber would do. But what I do is leagues below what like an actual production would do. So I'm somewhere in the middle. I have some like really professional equipment and I have some gorilla garbage equipment equipment. <laughs> All of my equipment is to make my life easier, filming the stuff really quick by myself as easily as possible. There is no like golden rule here for making YouTube videos. This is just how I do it. All you have is your phone. That's perfectly fine. It's not about the gear. This is just how I do it. And I like seeing the process of other YouTubers, how they do it. So I feel like uh, I would like to watch something like this. I'm gonna put this mic on. I feel like this is gonna be a disaster. So this is an Audio-Technica lav mic. I hate lav mics. They they rub and they sound weird and they look like shit and I, I hate them, but uh, well, I'm not supposed to curse. They look like F. So I'm just wearing it because I'm going to be running around and you'll be able to hear me better. All right, let's see how this sounds. I am plugging in. Hello. I am using a lav mic now. Hello! I'm loud. This is my normal speaking volume. I'm cranking this bitch all the way up. All right, so I'm going to film an unboxing now. Uh, this camera is, I, I, I've used this camera a lot for filming like top down unboxings and I don't hate it, but the quality of video is not that great. So what I plan on doing right now is I'm going to, I'm gonna hook my Canon up to this freaking HDMI cable. Also this light here, this is a Godex light. Everything that I'm using today, you can you can find in the description of my video. That gives me money. Those are affiliate links for Adorama. So you can buy them from Adorama. It is a very bright light. <laughs> I got this nice Manfrotto tripod, which is very good. But the leg keeps falling off and this is an expensive tripod. So I'm a little disappointed in the tripod. So I don't know if I want to do a straight top down. I guess I do. This camera, I can get top down with this tripod. I just, I want it to be really high. So I'm going to probably just put it on my desk. Yeah, this should be good. Mini HDMI. Yeah, baby. Now, do you remember what it looked like before? This is gonna look way better. Boom. Whoop. The frame rate's gonna be weird. I shoot everything in 24 frames per second. It looks, uh, it, it's 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 hard to explain to gamers because gamers expect higher frame rates to be better, but 24 frames per second is uh, more cinematic looking. 24 to 70 lens, yes, this is a Sigma 24 to 70. Yeah, so this is a full frame camera, so things are a little wider, which is nice. So let me get these legs out of the shot. Also, let me get me back in the shot. So you see how the frame rate's quicker now? Look, look at the frame rate here. This is 60 frames, this is 24 frames. You can see it's like a little, it's a little wonkier, but uh, when the video is finished, it'll look more cinematic. Bob, you might wanna look at the tags. Oh God, I don't, I don't do tags. Oh, well I'm not LGBTQIA. All right, now there should be no legs in the shot. Another thing I wanna do is I wanna show you exactly what's happening on my screen. So, so here's my settings. I shoot in IPB, so IPB is lower quality. If I wanted to shoot in really high quality, I would do all I, but no one has ever proven that it's actually visually better. So <laughs> I'd rather save on the file size. And I'm uploading to YouTube anyway, so who cares? It's gonna crush it anyway. I shoot in daylight balance. I want HDMI to not be clean. That's what I want. There is definitely a way to get all my like, stuff on the screen because I want to show you guys like my ISO and, and, and shutter speed and whatnot. It may only work in stills mode. That's possible. 
Yeah, well, it does it in photo mode. All right, I'll set up the shot. I'll, sh I'll show you what I do, but I'll do it in photo mode. Oh, of course I can't see on my own screen. Usually I like to use the touch screen to change ISO and stuff, so. So when I shoot videos, I shoot in 24, so shutter speed is one over 20, or I guess 25. Oh wait, I screwed up. Remember when I said I shoot at one over 25 for the, for the shutter speed? That's if I'm shooting in 60 frames. I don't know why I said that. I always shoot one over 50. Benny, if you're editing this, make sure you put this when I talk about the shutter speed. <laughs> the aperture is f2.8. I try to shoot really wide because I like the background to be blurry. I have a speed booster on this, so I could get more, could make it wider, but I usually like to keep it sharp. ISO, I think the native ISO on this camera is 400. And I like to keep it around there. So you can see right now it's like blown out. So the ISO is really high. <laughs> I'm just gonna do this and I'm gonna change it like that. And there you go, ISO 400. And this isn't in, it's it's not displaying it in log, but th these are the settings that I use basically all the time. If I want to make something brighter or darker, the first thing I'll usually change is the ISO. If I want to get more stuff in focus, I'll change the f-stop. This never changes unless I change my frame rate, which is almost never. So I have a custom profile set up that has all of those settings. So this is, the settings are all the same as what you just saw. Also when I'm, when I'm filming myself, I will do, I'll do face detect autofocus, but when I shoot products, I like to do one point. So the middle is what's in focus. So it'll focus on whatever's in the middle. Uh, so anyway, let's shoot. This is how I shoot everything. I always start off with a little bang. I'm recording right now. Uh, I didn't like that one. It's got to land in the middle. There you go. Good enough. And I already opened it just to see. Oh, he left little notes for me. I don't want to talk too much because I like getting the foley of like the paper rustling around. Thanks, love Ben. Bob, this is the funny playing retro pixel IPS LCD. It has a lot of pictures, a lot of what? Features, that looks like a P. It has five pixel modes. Oh, okay. This thing is kind of confusing. There is a sensor at the top. Long press the sensor to cycle between pixel modes. Okay, we're gonna have to do this with the camera in my hand. All right, you guys ready to actually see what it looks like? This is their website by the way. They're big on Instagram, you know? Here we go. Let's see. Oh, this is very soft. Oh, he gave me Wario Land. That was very nice of him. Ooh, I already got a freaking fingerprint on it. I'm gonna stop recording so that I can get double A's. I'm killing a lot of birds right now. Fulfilling my Adorama obligation, filming a video, testing the product, you know? I need like a microfiber or something. Here's a microfiber for you. Good as new. All right, let's get back to filming, shall we? Oh, <laughs> wrong, wrong one. All right, battery time. Ooh, Nihongo. I've, I've never played this game. What the hell just happened? Did it die? I think it died. Oh, look, it's fading. It's fading. Yeah, it's, these batteries are effed. <laughs> oh, here, I'll take them out of this thing. Now I know this works because this Xbox controller works. Round two. So if I want to crop in, I will, because most people don't watch YouTube videos at 4K. Most people watch it at like 720p or something. So I got no problem cropping in like 200%. Although I try to avoid it. I'll try to zoom in when I can. It's hard to play and, and position yourself. So, all right, let's read through these notes again and see what I can do. And then I will set up a little, little B-roll shoot. Right now, this is just like the top down testing stuff. Okay, so let's see here. I'm gonna move my focus point to the left. Boop, I just tapped the screen to do that. Let's hit record. Recording. Am I recording? Sometimes I forget. Sometimes I'll just do the thing and I'll forget to hit record. This is the funny playing retro pixel IPS LCD. So they just made, this is a brand new LCD that they made specifically for Game Boy. It has a lot of features. It has five pixel modes. This thing is kind of confusing. There is a sensor at the top. Long press the sensor to cycle between pixel modes. So there's the sensor. Uh... Am I wrong? I don't think I'm wrong. Doesn't look like it's doing much. Is this the sensor? Ooh, I think that might be the sensor. It definitely changed a pixel mode. I think it's not getting darker, it's getting scan lines. Yeah, yeah, now it has no scan lines. Okay, so that I think is the sensor. That is something else. Tap sensor to adjust brightness. I think that literally, that literally just added scan lines. So let's do a tap then. That's the brightness, okay. The logo also has lights and changes color. Hold, select, and start till only game lights up. Nice. Tap sensor to select color. <gasps> Yo, let's go. Tap SS to cycle through colors. Oh, it changed color, okay. 
What color do I want? I kind of want the purple. Ooh, yellow looks cool. Wow, there's a lot of colors. I want like that pinkish purple. That, that looks sick. Select color, hold start and select to lock in color choice. There you go. All right, and that's all the features of this screen, basically. Cool. All right, so that is the top-down shot. We did it, yay. I'll probably get more, I'll probably play more games on it, but uh, you get the general idea. Now I'm gonna set up some nice pretty B-roll shots. Now would be a good time to have a nice wireless HDMI setup. All right, I'm gonna set this place up to get nice crispy B-roll. Chair has to go. Sorry, Mr. Chair, you're in the damn way. I have two chairs in my room. Ugh. So, ugh. These lights back here, you see how they're nice and sharp over here? But you see how they get bigger as you get further back? That's called bokeh. They're out, they're getting out of focus. And I like the way that this looks. If you've ever seen Seth's stream on Adorama or whatever, he's got some crispy bokeh. So what I'm doing right now, I'm gonna set up a shot facing that way and it gets the nice crispy bokeh because I get it nice and out of focus for the background and it's freaking cool. What I do is I, I take this, I take these chairs, I go like this, and then I have like a little coffee table that I put on top so that the product is a little higher so that you get the, the nice background. This table is what Rue uses to sit on. He doesn't fit on it, his whole body like hangs off, but it's next to the couch and Rue sits on this and looks out the window. So the top of it is all scratched up, but it doesn't matter. You, as you can tell, this is a very gorilla operation, but that's YouTube, baby. Take a mental picture of what this looks like right now. I mean, yeah, like, like this shot looks good, but like this table, it looks dumb. It's on chairs, it's stupid. How could this ever look good? You watch. Get some lights here. Give me the camera. Get this chair out of my freaking way. Get this here. Okay, I got cables everywhere right now. All right, uh, I need something to stand it on. So if you're zoomed out, there's no bokeh in the background. The lights aren't doing a cool thing, but if you zoom in, now look at it. It's a little bright in here. I'm gonna turn off this ring light that I have in front of my stuff. And I could bring all this stuff closer. If it's further from the, whoa. If it's further from the background, it'll look better. We want more of those lights. Now you see the nice, the nice balls of light here. Now, if I change the focus, they'll be in, they'll be in focus and they'll, they'll be smaller. But now they're nice and big. Also, if I raise the aperture, right now I'm at F2.8, but if I raise it, it'll get darker, but the lights you'll see, they'll get smaller because more stuff is in focus. So I like the shot, but I like, as you can tell, I like to have a blue background. I mean, you can't see it now because of this light, but I like the nice blue background. I'm, I'm very like pink and red and the background is blue. So it's a good separation. So I want to add blue. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going into my closet right now. I have these little, ugh, I have these Yang Nuo lights that are really cool. I used to use these for every video. I don't really anymore. I use them a decent amount though. These are LEDs. They're very cheap and they're battery powered. You, you put like those Sony batteries on here and blue is the brightest color that these kick out because there's red, green, and blue LEDs in these. So if you do like the teal, it has the blue and the green on at the same time. I'm going to put a battery on these let me get the legs out i use these for a shoot in chinatown for the apparel what was that two years ago maybe three years ago now and that was great because we could walk around chinatown with just with just these things so it's already set to blue because it knows what i like there you go so we'll do one here and we'll do one over here. So let's see what this looks like. There you go, look at that nice blue background, dude. Look at that. All right, so a little canted angle, not happy with it. Need that perfect, perfect adjustment. All right, I'm gonna hit record. I turn this guy on. Boom, that looks awesome. <laughs> so that, that's the first shot. There you go. So I'm very happy with that shot. Now we're gonna get a new shot. Uh, let's get like a little bit of an angle on the screen here. Ooh, this looks good. It, this isn't even what I was going for, but a little happy accident. It looks pretty damn good. Look at that, dude. Come on, man. Come on. You got a little glare on the screen. Ooh, baby mama. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Ooh, look at that. Just moving it, just moving it a tad. Ooh, baby. Oh, and you get the neon. Oh, ooh. And 
I'm barely touching any settings right now. Again, I, sh I shoot in 1 over 50, f2.8, ISO 400. I'm barely touching anything. I adjusted the light to make sure that it was not too bright. Everything I did really was, was practical. I didn't really do anything with the camera other than lock in those settings. And I have a custom profile on the camera, so whenever I turn the camera on, it just automatically goes to those settings. Let's get more. Let's get more B-roll. Ooh, baby. I forgot how good it looked. <laughs> I don't know what else to do though. Oh, that even looks good. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that looks good. So here's the problem though. I want to move this. And if I move this, you see the other neon light. <laughs> and it kind of looks bad. So I don't have a slider. If I had a slider, I would slide across like this and it would look really good, but I don't. There'll probably be one in the new studio. I don't got room for that stuff here. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to pan the camera. I'm going to lock focus so it doesn't screw up. I'm going to record. I'm just going to do a little bit of this. Beautiful, that's the shot. You can see, actually look, you can see how scratched up the table is. All these scratches from the doggo. The scratches just add texture isn't a bad thing. True, I agree. What else do we wanna do? I wanna get different games in here. I'm not happy with just Wario Land. Do I have Metal Gear? I need Metal Gear. Metal Gear is the best Game Boy Color game ever created. I'll be back in a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab uh, all my games. Also, check this out. I found my childhood Game Boy. It says Bobby on the back. So we can see what an actual Game Boy Color screen looks like. And let me tell you, it looks horrible. <laughs> Got Pokemans, Mega Mans, Metal Gear, baby. Yes. All right. This is definitely making the cut. Super Mario Deluxe. I have two copies of this, which would be good for a comparison. So all these are regular Game Boy. I don't want to use regular Game Boy games. Let's do a, let's do a comparison. Go buy Pokemon Crystal right now, you piece of garbage. That is probably the most important Game Boy Color game. I stand by that. Uh, Metal Gear is the best though. Sorry about it. Mm -hmm. How can I stand these up together? I think I have to use this box. Put a little space between, look at, the, look at the friggin' difference. You can't even see nothing. I'm gonna angle them a little bit so that they're both lit. I'm gonna move back and zoom in. You can't, you can't even see the yellow. Like you can't do anything. That's just what it is. That's just it. There's, no, there's nothing you could. There's nothing you could do about that. That's just. <laughs> this is just how it's gonna look. I'm gonna let it roll a little bit just until the yellow one shows something. There we go. Title screen. Look at the, I, I, look at this. Look at what this shot looks like. And now look at it in the camera. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's amazing. I want to get close-ups of the new screen. Let's put it back on the the cool stand. Ooh, that looks good. Ooh, we actually, before we get that shot, I wanna change the game. So I'm gonna get a shot of me changing the game. Putting Metal Gear in, baby. All right, we're gonna angle this and get real up there into the screen. I also like to have a little bit of movement in all my shots. So let's get a little bit of movement in here. Look at that screen. Oh baby, yeah, I'm recording right now. I'm just moving slightly down. This tripod has a lot of like, has some good resistance. Like it's very smooth. That's a cool shot. Okay, I'm gonna compare it to the other Game Boy that Game Changer mod uh, gave me. Oh, that's good. Every every one of these <laughs> is messing up. There you go, AJ, are you happy? Pokemon Red works. So you see that flicker? That flicker is because of my shutter speed. Flicker isn't in real life, it's only on camera. Bob, I wanted to ask, did you take actual video production classes or are you self-internet taught? Uh, I took a photo class in college and the teacher had uh, medical problems and he only came to class five times. So I am uh, self-taught in video and stuff. My, I, I went to school for graphic design. So there's that, but everything else I, I taught myself. I wanna get another shot. I wanna get another shot of these screens together. I guess the last thing we'll do is we'll compare it to um, we'll compare it to uh, the SP. So let me go grab the Game Boy SP. All right, so I have the Game Boy Advance SP. Hopefully it turns on. If it doesn't turn on, then I can't do this shot. It's got a uh, oh, it's got <laughs> it's got my video in it. I think I'm gonna get Tenet. The Tenet. Uh, good old good old Nintendo. 
I'm not, I'm not doing this on purpose. Good old Nintendo knows how to make stuff. I'm getting Tenet. I have all of Tenet in this plastic bag. Uh, I guess we'll just, let's do like the middle of the movie. We'll do the end. Five of five. Spoilers for Tenet, guys. <laughs> Wait, don't I have one that is the whole video? Oh, is this the whole video? Never mind. I'm going to do this one then. I thought this was the Skillshare ad. You know what? The, you guys probably want to see it, don't you? So if you don't know, I have a video where I put uh, the movie Tenet on five Game Boy Advance cartridges. So, so the movie Tenet is on here. But also, I have, I put the YouTube video on a cartridge. And I think this is the cartridge? Yes, this is the video. I was worried this was the Skillshare ad, but nope. It's the video. So these are the different backlight settings for this. Ooh, the backlight wasn't even on. Okay, so this is this is no backlight? That looks great. But anyway, you go like this, and now that's backlit. And that looks pretty good, honestly, compared to the freaking Game Boy Color, or the old Game Boy Color. And that's the Skillshare ad. So I was recording that whole time. I think that was a pretty good shot. Uh, now let's get one with just the color. Now you have to put this clips video on a cartridge pop. <laughs> no, I refuse. I hurry up Skillshare, you're ruining my shot. Beautiful shot. So I'm gonna get more B-roll probably, and I'm gonna play with the, with, the, with the Game Boy a little more. I shoot my videos two different ways. What I like to do is play with the product and get the B-roll at the same time, but it's hard to play with the product and shoot the video all at once, as you can see. Like I'm not focusing on looking at the screen and, and, and uh, playing the games, I'm focusing on uh, getting the shot. In terms of workflow, I like I, I like filming while I'm playing with the thing. So I like shooting the B-roll first in terms of workflow, but it's much easier to play with the thing off camera and then shoot the B-roll after. What I end up typically doing is I play with the thing and then I write the video and then I shoot the A-roll, which is me talking to the camera like this. Hey, everybody, I wanna talk to you about these Game Boys. And then after I shoot the A-roll, I put it all in a Google Doc. It looks a lot like this. So here's, here's the script and then I make notes where all the B-roll is gonna go, right? And then I, this is usually notes like, like this, for example, controller slash K b-roll so this isn't the shot this this isn't a, a file this is i need to shoot this so then this usually goes into my shot list so i have to shoot it in this video i shot the b-roll first so it was good in terms of workflow so i'll scroll down here and i'll write notes where all the b-roll should go and then i'll leave a note of what b-roll is gonna go there and then i'll put it into a shot list and then i'll get all the shots but right now since i filmed a lot of the b-roll what i'll do is i'll write the script and i will just put the shots where they need to go and then Ian the editor will paint by numbers he'll he'll put the shots where they need to go uh, most of the time <laughs> some of the time he'll put the shots where they don't need to go <laughs> who are you calling a roll so we did a lot today that was good that script alone would take hours to write let alone record so that's my, my biggest problem is writing the script uh, and that's why I procrastinate so hard because it takes it takes a lot of like mental capacity to write to sit and write for a while and I just put I just procrastinate it so hard but once I sit down and actually write I can plow through it in like two hours. It just flows right out. But actually getting to the point of sitting down and doing it is is my biggest hurdle. The workflow is gonna change a little bit when, when we get this studio, because I'll have people with me and uh, I'll be able to, I'll, I'll be like at an office, so maybe I'll have like a day where I can just play with the product and then I'll have a, or I'll have somebody film me while I'm doing it. But then we'll have like a crap ton of useless B-roll. I try not, I like doing it this way with the script because then I don't have useless B-roll and then I'm not wasting space on like a hard drive. When I, whenever I shoot the B-roll first, I always have like way too much B-roll. How soon did you say you're moving into the studio? I'm moving in uh, in September. I'm, I'm keeping this the way it is. I'm hopefully just just making a new setup at the studio so I can film here or I can film at the studio. Will the channel become more of a collaborative effort when you get the studio? Maybe not on purpose. Things shouldn't change like at all, but uh, maybe the time I upload. Oh, that's another thing. Uh, I think we're done uh, doing the uh, previews in the Discord. Right now, uh, for supporters on uh, twitch.tv slash wolfden, 
if you're a supporter, you get videos like a few hours early, but I'm enjoying uploading them in the afternoon. So there's really no time to, to post them in the Discord. When we change the workflow around a little bit, maybe there'll be time to post them in the Discord, but right now it's not really gonna happen. We'll live without the preview, I know. Most, uh, not a lot of people watch the previews and it was only a few hours. Collab with which people? Duh, the people that I already work with. It, it, don't get too excited. <laughs> it's stressful keeping a schedule and doing everything yourself, but I enjoy it. Do you have a, lo a list of ideas like a backlog or do you come up with videos weekly? I have a short list of ideas. Typically I come up with the videos weekly. Like Seth asked me what, last week he asked me what this video was gonna be on and I was like, I have no friggin' idea. I came up with this video idea on Hannah. When did I come up with this video idea? Friday? Friday or Saturday. And I bought all the stuff. And that's kind of why I bought all the stuff on Prime because I wanted it really quick. Well, this Game Boy Color thing, uh, I got this sent to me last week so this one i knew i was gonna do but um i did a i did a video on a on a playstation 5 and xbox series x monitor last week so i knew i wanted to do a nintendo switch video this week just to get the numbers back up because we do numbers do good when we talk about nintendo switch so next week the numbers won't be as good as this week but they should still be okay hopefully i mean every time i do a game boy video it does bad but if i do it if i try to like hopefully if i angle it like there's a new screen for the game boy color i'm sure there'll be some you know hobbyists hobby elitists that are like this isn't new this has been around for over a year hopefully angling it like that will uh will get the people watching. These are also the most fun videos. I like talking about uh, this sort of retro stuff. The friggin' uh, Game Boy Advance is still playing, by the way. It's still, it's still playing my video. This is a great stream, though. A very behind the scenes look into how you do things and can help so many other people. Thank you. I will be uh, having Benny edit this together and put it over on uh, the Clips channel. So it'll be archived forever and you can watch it over and over again. I'm happy to do this stuff. I like watching this from other YouTubers when other YouTubers do it. Uh, I like like MKBHD when he does his studio tours. I love that stuff. So anyway, uh, I think we're done here, boys. I appreciate you watching. I'm gonna try to stream tomorrow because I wanted to stream Ocarina today and I want to get through it. I want to plow through Ocarina. So yeah, I want to try to stream tomorrow. Uh, maybe I'll do some Ocarina. Fridays are usually not a good day for me to stream people don't really watch but uh i want to stream some more uh, i'll try to do some ocarina tomorrow thanks for being here everybody and watching and thank you wolf den clips for watching make sure you slap a like and subscribe to this channel for more content similar to this thank you adorama for having me around appreciate you and i'll see you tomorrow goodbye everybody.